Your new motherboard just came, you build your system and you spend hours building that perfect custom loop and then that sinking feeling hits when you push the power button and nothing happens. I'm gonna help you avoid that sinking feeling with these easy, quick steps. To accomplish these steps, you're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need the motherboard that you're testing. You're also gonna need a power supply with a 24 or a 20 plus four pin power connector. And you're gonna need appropriate electrostatic discharge protection such as an ESD wristband. Here we have the appropriate materials necessary to conduct this test. We're gonna go ahead and put our electrostatic discharge protection on first. So now that we have the electrostatic wristband on, we're gonna go ahead and attach it to the power supply so that we can discharge any of our static electricity during this testing procedure. The first step to determining if your motherboard is DOA will be taking a visual of any physical damage that may be apparent. This can be in the form of capacitors that are bent or anything that doesn't look straight in the RAM slots or the DIM.2 slot if you have one. If you have a removable heat sink, in this case I have two, I have this one here and this one, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those so that I can see any damage that might be hiding underneath. So we can see that removing this heat sink revealed an M.2 slot, which we can look at the connections of that M.2 slot to determine if there's any physical damage to that port. We can check the PCI 5.0 slot here, check the connections, everything seems to be good there. And then we can also test the quick release for the PCI 5.0 slot. Make sure that is working. So everything looks pretty good here. I'm gonna go ahead and replace this heat sink so that we can move on to the lower one. Next, we can go ahead and remove the lower heat sink. As you can see, taking off the lower heat sink revealed two M.2 slots, which we can check for damage. Everything looks good on those. Next, we can look at the PCI 5.0 slot, check for any bent pins inside of this connection. Everything seems to be okay. Here, we can check the latch and make sure that's working appropriately. Then we can also look at the PCI 4.0 slot and make sure there's no bent pins inside of that connection. Here, we can see more capacitors. We can check the audio capacitors over here and make sure nothing looks bent as well. So this is the CMOS battery. It's a CR2032. Everything looks installed correctly with that, so we're good to go there. Next, you can look at all of your headers and make sure the pins are nice and straight. You can check these switches and make sure they switch appropriately. Make sure that they are back in their default positions. And again, you can just go down and push these buttons, make sure that they click and make sure that everything works as it should. Check down the sides here at your connections as well. Click these buttons to make sure that they are also functioning as appropriately as you possibly can tell. Now that we're finished with all of that, we're gonna go ahead and replace the lower heat sink. I'm not tightening these tight at all. They're just set so that they're not gonna loosen and they're not overly tightened so that they're gonna cause any type of damage to the board. The last step in the visual check is gonna to be to look at the pins in the CPU socket. We're gonna go ahead and push down and out to get it out from underneath the hook, and we're gonna keep pressure on it so that it doesn't spring up as it is spring-loaded and we don't wanna damage the motherboard. From there, the CPU tray will swing up and will reveal the LAN grid array where your CPU will sit. Once you have access to the pins on the LAN grid array, you can make sure that they all look straight and that there aren't any missing. Once you're finished doing that, you've determined to the best of your ability that everything looks straight and there aren't any missing pins, you can go ahead and shut the CPU tray with the protective covering over top and then pull down the latch, push it under and over the hook, and your protective covering is back on your CPU socket. Next comes the fun part. We're gonna put power from the power supply into the motherboard through the ATX power port. We're gonna go ahead and power off our power supply so we don't have any power flowing through our cable when we go to plug it into the ATX port. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the ATX power right now. I'm 
not sure if you were able to hear the click, but it is audible and you want to make sure that you do hear it. That way there's no issues with connections and then we are not creating any excess heat with the potential to burn a connection from all the power that's coming through these cables. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the power supply on. As you can see, the motherboard is in its standby mode now and this is indicating that it is getting power and that everything is working as it should. However, we're not done yet. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna push the start button on your motherboard. So all of these indications are showing that this motherboard is working as intended. It's recognizing no CPU, no RAM, and it is operating as it should normally. This is as far as we can tell a motherboard that is not dead on arrival. This motherboard was successfully bench tested, and these are steps that you should take on any motherboard as soon as it arrives. That way, if something is wrong, you can start the manufacturer's warranty process and get it replaced as soon as possible. You can check out my video of the motherboard that we just bench tested by clicking here. Thanks for watching.